My name is Jenna, and today we're going to talk about how to read the Bible and actually get stuff out of it. Has this ever happened to you? I opened my Bible, I read something, and then I had no idea what I just read or how it had anything to do with my day or my life. Do the passages make sense when the pastor preaches it, but on your own you struggle to understand the Bible? Psalm 119, 162 says, I rejoice at your word like one who finds great spoil. You can find great treasure in scripture and you can do it on your own. You can feed yourself on God's word and experience real transformation. I was fortunate enough to be part of a, a wonderful organization in college called InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. It was through this group that I first came to follow Jesus and learned to love scriptures. In my time there as a student and then as a staff member, I learned some simple methods that helped me understand and grow in, in love for God's Word and allow it to transform me by applying it. In this video, I'm going to uh, do my best to teach you what I know. There's a simple method that we'll walk through together called OIA, which stands for Observation, Interpretation, and Application. We live in an instant gratification culture. We want things fast. But we're reading a text that's 2,000 plus years old in a part of the world and culture different than our own. So chances are we're not going to understand what Jesus wants us to do after reading it once. This may be intimidating to you. But let's see what the text is really saying and not just breeze through it based on what you think it ought to say or even just assuming you know what it says because of a sermon or a book. Let's read with fresh eyes and slow down our reading. Go through the passage and look for the following things. The five W's. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. Look for cause and effect, repeated words, and keywords. Once you've taken time to look for observations, you've already slowed down your time reading and rereading scripture, but keep looking and resist the temptation to make sense of it just yet. It's important to take a posture of curiosity as well. Being curious helps us from assuming we know what it says and keeps us looking again and again for more. Asking questions of the text is another great way to get at observations. If you can point to it or it's an indisputable fact, it's an observation. Gather as many of them as you can. Scoop them all up like you're mining for gold in a river. You scoop all the rocks, dirt, sand, sticks, and pebbles along with the gold, but you, you don't know what's gold until you've sifted it. And that's the process of interpretation, which is our next step. Here's a pro tip. I like to set a timer for about six or eight minutes and look at a passage of only about two paragraphs in length. You'll feel like you're done way too soon, but press in and keep looking for the whole time. You'll be blown away at the amount of questions it'll generate and things you'll notice. Now that we've scooped up as many facts and observations and repeated words as we can, we need to start to see which observations are key to unlock the meaning of the text. It's time to sift through the dirt for the gold. Not everything we notice will necessarily be important. Develop some questions based on your observations. What did the author intend to communicate to the original audience? Or what's the significance of? Ask yourself, what's the tension in this text? That'll often lead you to the main point. What's bothering you? Highlight that tension and create a question for yourself around it. Take some moments to imagine the perspective of the people in the passage. What might be going on in their time period or culture uh, for Jesus maybe to act the way he did or say the thing he did? Feel free to take time now to find answers to some of those cultural context questions. I suggest using the Blue Letter Bible app. It's a free app that has Bible dictionaries and commentaries. Um, try your best, though, to use the scripture passage itself to answer the questions you have before you move on to other outside sources. To know if you're generating good interpretation questions, here's an acronym, TIGHT. So great questions are text-dependent, so questions that arise from the text itself. They're interesting, uh, they promote good discussion, they highlight the tension, and they tie observations together. After we've done all that great work to sift through and discover what the text says, it's finally time to figure out what it's saying to you and me or us as a community. 
as an individual. If you don't apply it, it's like checking the weather channel and seeing, oh, it's going to rain, and then not bringing your umbrella with you. So here's some questions you can ask yourself to get at good application. Is there a central truth I need to put into practice? Is there a promise, command, or example to follow or to avoid? And get specific about this. As specific as you can, don't leave it vague and don't avoid the challenge. How do I respond to what the passage is saying? Does it challenge how I see the world? What are the implications for the community that I'm a part of? Spend some time praying that God would help you believe and obey. Don't skip this step. If you aren't allowing scripture to transform you, you're wasting your time. And most people in our, again, instant gratification culture, don't leave time at the end of their study for application. It might make it easier for you if you wrote down some possible applications from the text and pick the ones that you sense the Lord is inviting you to respond to. That's all for this video. Uh, if you want to practice it more, uh, check out the next video where we study together.